if you've ever worked with SQL databases in Go, then you have probably experienced the effort it takes to write all the necessary boilerplate code. After all that being done, the next issue eventually occurs when adding, removing or changing columns in your tables. Either you forget to add a new field to your Ghostructs or simply mix up the columns in your queries. But let me tell you, there is a tool for that. Hey guys, this is Philip with Go Web Examples, and today we will be looking at a tool called SQLC. What is SQLC and how does it work? SQLC is a code generator tool written in Go, which reads your database schema and SQL queries and generates Go code out of that. So instead of writing your Go code that queries your SQL database, you just write all your queries into a single file, give it some meta information and let it generate your Go code. The really cool thing about SQLC is that it actually parses your database schema, its data types and your written queries. With that internal map of your database, it can then go ahead and check for integrity issues, syntax errors or invalid columns or tables. After that is being processed, it then generates structs for your tables and methods for your queries. To start off, I've created an empty Go module in beforehand with the go mod init command. Since we might use this tool more often in the future, I'd like to install it globally into my Go path. To do that, let's move out of our current project directory, for example into slash tmp and go on from there. The installation of SQLC is very simple, so we can just type into our terminal go get github.com slash kyleconroy slash sqlc slash cmd slash sqlc. This might take a few moments to grab all its dependencies. Once that is done, let's install it so it's globally available by typing go install github.com slash kyleconroy slash sqlc slash cmd slash sqlc and verify everything was installed correctly by typing in sqlc. As we can see, sqlc was installed successfully. Let's get back to our project directory. SQLC is very simple to use. We basically just need two of all its commands. The first is sqlc init, which generates an empty settings file for our configuration. Let's open up the newly generated sqlc.yaml file. As you can see, this file is pretty empty. We have to define our desired settings on our own. First, let's get rid of the empty brackets and start to configure our package. I've pasted in all the necessary configuration settings for you, but let's look at each of them individually. Name specifies the package name the generated code will be using. I like to call it Postgres, as this is our backing database engine. Path defines where the generated code should be placed. Since the directory path and the package name are usually the same in Go, we can also type in Postgres here. Image JSON tags can be turned on to generate JSON struct tags on our models. This is very helpful if we want to return our structs in, let's say, a REST API. Now to the interesting part, queries and schema. These settings define where SQL reads our database schema and our queries from. These are also the two files which define what Go code SQLC will generate. So let's also create those two. In case you have multiple schema or query files, for example if you work with migrations, you can also put in a directory path into that setting and it will collect all files in those. Let's go ahead and write our first database schema. I've already prepared a demo schema for us to work with. As you can see, we define two new tables, users and to-dos. Our users table consists of three columns. The ID field, which is our automatically incrementing primary key, a first name and a last name, which are of type text. In our to-dos table, we also have an ID field, just like in our users table, a user ID field, which links a to-do to a user, and two fields task and done. Task will contain the actual text of the to-do and the done field will indicate whether or not the to-do is completed. SQLC has an internal map of all the data types Postgres has and can translate them into Go data types. This is very handy, so you never end up with inconsistencies, for example if your schema defines a nullable field 
why Ghost Drug does not. Once we are happy with our schema, we can define our queries. SQL wants us to write our queries in a special but very simple format. Let me paste in some queries for us to take a look at. As you can see, these queries look very simple. Just like any other query you could directly use for retrieving data from your database. But you may have noticed, instead of giving the query concrete parameters, for example in the WHERE clause, we put in placeholders like $1, $2, $3 and so on. These placeholders will be passed and filled later in the code generation. The most important part of this format though is the SQL comment right above each query. It consists of two parts. The first one being name. Here we define what the go method should be called during the code generation. The second one, which has three possible options, colon many, colon one and colon exec. This part specifies what the return value of our go method should look like. If you want the query to return a slice of results, rewrite colon many. If our query just returns a single value, for example in the get user query, rewrite colon one. If our query has no return value at all, like in a delete query, we can simply write colon exec. You may have also noticed the create user and create to do query have the colon one argument, even though they do not query the database, but instead insert a new tail row. Well, we could specify the colon exec argument, but if we did that, we wouldn't know what the actual inserted values would be, in this particular case the user id. So we specify the colon one argument to read back everything we've inserted. Once everything is said and done, let's let the magic happen. We open up our terminal again and simply write sqlc generate. If sqlc encounters a problem while passing our files, it will report exactly the location where the problem occurred. But in our case, everything was fine. As you can see, a new folder Postgres was created. Let's firstly open up the db.go file and take a look at what sqlc generated for us. In this file, sqlc generated a new interface which matches the methods of the Go standard database SQL package. It also generated the new function to wrap our database connection into. The new function returns the query struct where the methods from our queries attach to. The withtx function is a helper function in case we would like to run multiple queries in a single SQL transaction. Now let's look at the models.go file. Here we can see these are the Go structs which have been parsed and generated based on our schema. As you might have noticed, all fields and data types match exactly what we've defined before. The last file it generated is the queries.sql.go file. This file contains all the wrappers for our queries with method names and return values we've specified. These methods look very clean and idiomatic. We also get type safety for free as there is no place at which an empty interface is set as an argument or returned by a function. Another cool thing to mention is that each method accepts a context as its first parameter. This is very handy if we want to use timeouts or cancellation in our queries. Each method also returns an error to indicate whether or not a query executed successfully. Now let's open up the main.go file and make use of our generated Postgres package. First, we will initialize the database connection, like you would always do, using Go's standard database SQL package. Also make sure you have an appropriate database driver installed and imported. If you do not have this already, you can simply go get it. Next, we have to wrap our database connection into our generated Postgres package. We will do that by writing db equals postgres.new con. This is everything we have to do for initialization. From here on, we can use all available query methods. To start off, let's write some code to create a new user. User error equals db create user 
context.background. And here is an interesting part. SQLC generated a struct for every query parameters. In this case, it's postgres.createUserParams. Always check for errors by writing if error not nil, log fatal error. Let's fill in all the necessary query parameters by writing first name colon John and last name colon Doe. Once we have our inserted user, let's print it out to the console by writing log println user. Alright, now that we're done coding, let's test it real quick and see if it works. I already have a database running in the background where I've created the tables from our schema before. So just make sure you have that running for you too. Let's run this by typing go run main.go and wow, everything works perfectly. If you like these kind of videos, I would highly appreciate if you leave me a like down below. Thank you guys for watching and happy coding!